Block 2 booster quick disconnect positions confirmed at Massey's, work resumes on the SQD arm at Sanchez, the LTM 11200 crane has been moved at the build site, and the steel wall sections are rising from the depths of the flame trench at the launch site. Hey everyone and welcome to RGV Aerial Photography's Starbase Flyover Update 78. Due to the cloudy weather, this flyover was conducted at an altitude of 5 to 6,000 feet. This allowed for some interesting views of Starbase. This flyover was shot with a brand new Sony 400-800mm zoom lens, and hopefully you'll notice the improved clarity straight away. The older lens had to be retired, as its image quality was starting to deteriorate after 200 flights. A very special thanks once again goes out to all the members of the RGV community for their generous donations towards this purchase. My name's Jeff A and I'll be your guide today, so let's kick back and take in all the exciting new developments of Starbase Texas. We'll start our adventure over at the Massey's test facility. Beginning at the structural test stand, you can see new additions have been made to the second and third levels, with five new pairs of heavy duty pistons installed on the second and a new vent manifold installed on the third. Two new control panels have been placed in the walkway and the spherical liquid nitrogen tank has a supply line plumbed into it, with a vent line to the nearby diffuser. This close-up is a great example of the superior clarity of the new lens. Moving to the new booster cryo stand, we can see steel for a platform taking shape around its perimeter. At the booster cryo station, an interesting new structure is taking shape. This appears to be a new quick disconnect structure with two interfaces instead of one. This is the first real confirmation of the Block 2 boosters having two QD ports. We speculate that one is for liquid oxygen and the other is for liquid methane. At the time of writing, Booster 17 had rolled to Massey's and started its cryotesting. Here's an image of it from Sean Giesler. Once this booster returns to the build site, we should see the deconstruction of this original QD framework and the plumbing rerouted into the new sections. The flame trench remains mostly unchanged, with the plate seen last flyover installed, plumbing reinstalled and the new banks of high pressure tanks plumbed in. This amazing image showing the flame bucket and its manifolds is yet another higher definition shot from the new lens. Concrete to the rear of the site has been completely laid and riprap placed on the riverside. So riprap is basically a layer of rubble that protects structures from water erosion. You can see it there behind the concrete. Finally, let's check up on progress at the Rio West development. To start, foundations for the shopping centre building have begun. Additionally, the homes are coming along nicely, with formwork and framing being stood up for the second floors in the bottom row of houses, as well as foundations progressing on the apartments in the middle row and near the river. At the new lots near Ad Astra, where the tiny homes from the village are being relocated, groundwork continues with an expansion towards the east, utilities run and a geotextile covering. Further away from Highway 4, what appears to be a transformer pad has been constructed. Now let's move to Sanchez. Let's begin at the launch mount where welding continues on the water inlet manifold. Moving to the flame bucket fabrication area where the centre ridge for the flame bucket is returned complete with its outer skin and inlet pipes. In this ground photo taken last week on the 4th of April, once again you can see the amazing detail that our new lens captures. Here on the underside of the flame bucket, you can clearly see mounting hardware and over the top, some of the miles of wells between the numerous water-filled pipes. Let's pivot to some more interesting hardware. Some new grey structures have arrived and could be the first pieces of a dual quick disconnect system for the new launch mount or the crowd test station at Massey's. To the left end of the grey structure in this image, there appears to be a pivot point and actuator mounting points in the centre. Between these two grey structures are some black frames, with actuators and what looks to be valve panels, though it is unclear what these pieces are for, and if they are even related to the quick disconnect system. At the factory jig construction area, you can see another six-sided frame has been assembled and appears to be a load spreader. Parts for more of the 10-segment work jigs can be seen staged here as well. After laying untouched for months, work has resumed on the quick disconnect arm with temporary scaffolding and a work platform being added. Ship 20 has been moved from its long-term parking spot to make room for more drainage work that will combine the runoff from Remedias Avenue and the pipes coming from between the mega bays. Here, closer to mega bay 2, you can see some formwork set up to make the DIY style drainage culverts. Before moving to the build site, we'd like to thank all of our YouTube and Patreon members. 
Remember, all the Patreon members get to participate in our show and tell sessions on the same day as each flight. Here you can join in discussions and ask your own questions. YouTube members also get to watch and listen in with a live chat function. With that, let's move over to the build site. Here we are looking behind Megabay 2. You can see several Chine deliveries and Raptor engine containers staged. At Megabay 1, Booster 14 was rolled back into the bay from the launch site on April 8th after it became the first booster to perform a static fire following flight, but more on that later. Also, Booster 17 was rolled out to Massey's for its cryogenic testing campaign on the early morning of the 8th. Throughout that week, parts of a test article began rolling into the bay. First a domed barrel section, followed by a plane barrel section. Lastly, in the early hours of the 8th, this aft section joined them. It's difficult to guess how the various parts will interface with the test rig at Massey's, so we'll just have to keep our eyes on future updates to learn more. In Megabay 2, Ship 35 should be almost ready for its static fire test. Ship 36 is fully stacked and Ship 37's A3 section has rolled into the bay. Meanwhile between the bays and the parking garage, the TML 11200 crane has been erected once again for further deconstruction of the high bay. We can see some of that action going on with this footage captured by La Padre Sentinel Cam and compiled by Vix. In the Star Factory, Ship 38's nose cone has received its forward flaps, and Ship 39's nose cone and header tank have been spotted. Some panelling has been removed from the exterior along the Highway 4 side, as captured by Sean Giesler on X. Moving on to the multi-storey apartment over at Boca Chica Village, pile drivers are hard at work forming the foundations of the residential building. The test structure seen in past weeks was removed. Three camping tents were put up on the north side of the site. I wonder what they're for? Moving on to the recreation facilities, the pool was filled with water. The water dispenser area was also fully constructed and painted. Let's hop over to the launch site. Starting at the flame trench, significant progress has been made since the last flyover. The ramp slopes are now starting to get the remaining concrete poured. The southeast ramp can be seen here, with the lower half complete. Hidden due to the lower altitude flight, the northwest ramp was poured on April 2nd and 7th, though it's unknown if the ramp is complete. The stacking of wall panels continues this week, with the centre section stacked four panels high. Several panels were missing in the middle and were lifted into place on April 7th and 8th. In the centre of the trench, the five support frames located under the flame bucket have been lifted into place. Some of the remaining centre panels can be seen near the yellow excavator. There are two panels with holes in them. The one visible has two holes for the water supply pipes for the flame bucket. Another with a single hole is behind the excavator, which will allow the pipe for the centre ridge to pass through. Along the edge of the site, a steel panel for the ridge support beam has arrived. Detail on the bottom is seen here, where it will rest on the five supports. There are additional details on some wall panels, where this will connect on each end to the walls. Look at this render from Chrome Kimi that shows how this beam is installed in the trench. The top of the beam is where the ridge for the water deluge system will rest. The other pieces on each side will further support the pipes of the bucket itself. Moving back to the gantry, further outfitting can be seen with many hardware assemblies filling the structure. Along the commodities trench, the second expansion loop has been completed. The remaining segment of trench has formwork set for wall installation, which was poured on April 7th. At the deluge pipe trench, the first six segments to arrive have been installed within. In this image we can see the ends exposed. They appear to have been encased in concrete, and have also begun to be covered in dirt. To the far end of the deluge tank farm, additional pipe assemblies are staged on pipe stands for further fabrication ahead of installation. On the near end, new pipe racks have been installed. These appear to contain pipe manifolds that will be used for high pressure gas distribution from the tank farm to the tower and launch mount gantry. Adjacent to the existing comms bunker, a new concrete pad has been poured. This area is for the electrical transformers to supply the new power bunker that arrived shortly after the previous flyover. The new pump farm continues to fill with new racks for pipes and valve assemblies. Near the front, all the locked pump skids are in place. Additional pumps and hardware are still needed to complete this section of the farm. Just behind, pipe racks for the methane supply pipes have been installed. Pump frames can be seen here, also waiting to be installed. Following the removal of the three damaged vaporizers following Flight 8, the remaining three have also been removed. 
either for structural improvements to be installed or for a different system to replace these that is less likely to be damaged during a launch. The last one can be seen lifted out on the 8th of April in this clip from La Padre's Rover 2 camera. Along Highway 4, the wall hasn't seen much progress, though through one of the gaps, we can see the transformers for the pump farm electrical bunker has been placed on their pad. Additional work can also be seen next to the two newest methane tanks. They are now surrounded by a short containment wall and pipe racks have been placed adjacent to them. The tank to the east is being worked on. The cap is removed with a ventilation hose running into the tank indicating workers have been inside. Before moving to pad A, a glance at the roundabout under construction shows the travel lane has been poured with approach and exit lane still under construction. Within the travel lane is a decorative stamped concrete lane. Once completing this site, they can shift traffic across the new concrete to finish construction on the north half. Booster 14 is seen atop the launch mount at Pad A. A successful static fire of its 33 Raptor engines was completed on April 3rd. SpaceX would confirm this on X and indicate that 29 of the engines are flight proven, though it is unclear if they were flown on Booster 14 or one of the other recovered boosters. Following a longer than typical stay at the pad, the booster finally rolled back to Mega Bay 1 for final launch preparations on April 8th. Here's a clip from Starbase Surfer on X. Behind the tower, the trench recently seen has been completely covered over. Extending from one of the pipes installed in that trench, a new pipe has been attached to the side of the tower and turning within at the height of the ship quick disconnect arm. It's suspected that this may be to supply CO2 to a new ship fire suppression system, following the results of Flight 7 and 8. Well, that's it for Episode 78 of Starbase Flyover Update. Thank you for choosing to fly with RGV Aerial Photography, and we hope you all enjoyed the flight. If you liked what you saw today, please subscribe for more episodes and content so you don't miss out on the new videos each week. I'm Jeff Hay, and we look forward to seeing you again from 10,500 feet.